What's up, guys? Welcome to the sesh, Rob. What's up, everybody? We're back. We got a special guest in the house. What's going on, Ray? Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming mm-hmm. by, Ray. I'm, I'm super, uh, super happy you're here, man. I think Thank there's you. important topics we're going to go through. Absolutely. Rob and I were talking about this earlier, and we're like, how are we going to... We were asking each other questions yeah. all day long, and we, we do that to, to warm up and yeah. see what's going on and what's going to go through our heads through the podcast. But you have a very interesting story, and, and it... I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about it and until think, you posted about it. And, and I think that was uh, one of the reasons I was not hesitant, but really nervous about doing this mm-hmm. because the subject is, has, is so stigmatized, mm-hmm. not only in our culture, but just, I think, globally, globally, yeah. that it's just not something we talk about. It's something we, we eat up and swallow, mm-hmm. you know. So, I okay. I, yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on because we've, we've been trying to podcast for a while, but it was under different circumstances. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when I saw that, and, and part of our podcast is because we want to add value back to the community. Definitely. And, and I important. see mental health is a huge fucking thing, man. Yeah. And, and a lot of people that I know, a lot of people of my friends, they've, they've taken their lives, dude. And it's, yeah. it's a really sad thing to see that. Yes. And, and, and at the same time, I'm feeling like I'm trying to post, give a certain image of myself online and then show people like a positive side while people are, you know, they're out there struggling. So I, I struggle with that a lot. And, and I think a lot of people do. So and your story is unique. Yeah. Right? And your story is unique. And when Josh brought it to my attention, um, I was like, wow, bro, man, I guess that, that would be a hell of a conversation. And then he was like, no, yeah, he's coming on the podcast. He wants to kind of bring awareness to this. And and so enough beating around the bush, what we're talking about is basically yeah, set a domestic up. dispute, you know, just domestic violence, you know, at home and, and, and kind yeah, of... Yeah, domestic abuse. Uh, and then we'll just be upfront about it. Uh, males being on the receiving end of it, yeah. which is, uh, like I said before, there's a stigma because not only in our, our culture, but which is generalized like as machismo, but generally as a man, you don't ever want to like say that you're a victim of anything yeah you know we're we're taught to be strong we're taught to be tough you know tough it out whatever be a man from the early age yeah from the earliest of ages and uh and then i'm i'm also conflicted because the the abuser the perpetrator the person that put me through it suffers from mental illness so you know that ultimately could be the cause of the behavior and so opening up about this i want to make sure that i make it clear that i'm not shitting on right people that have problems you know Mm -hmm. the idea here is to make sure that people know that when you become aware of a problem or 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 you suspect a problem seek help you know seek professional help medical help because in my situation uh i call her my wife Right. We never got married. Uh, uh, she's my ex. Now I can comfortably call her my ex finally. But uh, we got together at an early age. So I met her in like late 1998. I moved to San Marcos. Right? And uh, I had a girlfriend. She had a boyfriend. We worked together. She, you know, one day she walked up to me and said, hey, do you know how to play drums? And I, I lied. I said, yeah, I know how to play <laughs> drums. I mean, I know how to keep a beat, but I just was like, oh, this cool chick's like asking me about music. I'm a musician. And we became friends. We became great friends. We drank together. We smoked together. We swam at the river together. And then, you know, after about a year of friendship, it became intimate. I left my girlfriend at the time and... She left her boyfriend, and these were long relationships that we had, but we were still young. She was 19, I was like 22. Mm -hmm. And we ended up getting together, and we had our first child in 2000. And in August of 2000, we moved to Austin, and we tried to create a life together. Uh, 2003, we had our second son. And there were clues early on of where she would get drunk and like, throw shit at me. Mm-hmm. I remember one time she threw a sky bottle, blue, the blue sky, that's how I remember it was a big one, a huge one. And I dug and it freaking made a hole in the wall. And then later on there was another incident where <clears throat> she uh, 
she, we lived in, we had a loft. There was a loft upstairs and downstairs. And from the loft, she threw like a piece of furniture down at me. Like years passed and, you know, we went through all the struggles that any, any relationship goes through. You know, there's financial problems, uh, jealousy problems. But I think the mental health issues that we never addressed created this uh, self-medication kind of turn to alcohol. Escape. Yeah, turn to alcohol to, to get so comfort. We turn to alcohol, we turn to drugs, you know, anything that could deaden yep. the feeling, yeah. the, the feeling, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and one time she threw a TV at me, like, I mean, she's a strong, strong yeah. person. Uh, and, and it was something that I just, I never wanted to face. I didn't grow up So the up throwing eventually, throwing items eventually graduated to, to you know, assault, like basically contact. physically yeah, contact. Like hitting. Physical contact. It started out with throwing things and, and breaking things and smashing things. And so those are all hints and clues, right? What was the demeanor after? Like after she would come so, back from like relief. Yes. Let out the anger and stuff. What was it? Was it, I'm, I'm kind of imagining like a constant state of awkwardness. Like, well, fuck, I, I did that. I'm sorry. Or yeah, was yeah, no, and 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 you would imagine it, but because most of like the real serious bouts happened at like the highest states of intoxication, mm -hmm. it would be a thing where it's like the next day nothing she happened. would act like nothing happened. But wow. the trauma was still there for me, Definitely. for my kids that were witnessing all yeah. of this. You know what I'm saying? Like it. And my, I also have like codependency issues. You know what I mean? I didn't want to, I didn't want to live a life of divorce. We were both children of divorce, right? Mm -hmm. We came from broken families, but I didn't come from like physical abuse. I never saw physical abuse in the home. Like my parents, you know, they were super calm. No, no. I hardly even heard my parents yell at each other, mm -hmm. you know, ever. So it was weird and new for me. So I didn't know what it was. And um, then gradually, and you're talking years and years and years of just getting fucked up, getting in fights. Uh, the next day, forgetting about it. It's or like nothing ever happened. Or like making up, you know, mm -hmm. great fucking sex, you know, like just intimacy. So like the spectrum of violence and, and anger was equaled by the to spectrum the of passion and, yeah. you know, and love. Yeah. Because I love this person to this day. That's a huge emotional roller coaster it's, that you're riding on, man. Jeez. I mean, okay, so then now, now 15, 20, 15, 18, 19 years into this, uh, it became to where my sons were old enough to understand and they, we've always been open with each other. They can communicate with me. So they start telling, like asking me, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. why are we still here? Mm -hmm. And then they start asking me, like, why are you allowing us to be subjected to this? And you wow. don't think about that shit when your kids are small. You know what I'm saying? You know, what's interesting about that is, is we had a conversation about that the other day is, is when people are going through divorces or, or they're, they're still together, but for the kids and you're arguing and you're always in the house and it's always that chaotic situation. We were talking about being separated and giving their, their children a better life. Well, what, uh what I was saying um, when we were having that conversation is that sometimes um, I have found that I've been married 24 years. I've been with my wife total 29. Um, sometimes in the efforts to keep the family together, couples will, will, will force it and stay together and endure because they assume that it's it's the right thing to do and it just feels natural because that's what we're taught when in fact when you do that and you force it you're subjecting the kids to witness the discomfort of not wanting to be there you know the discomfort of the fighting and 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 then it becomes normalcy and and normal is is home you know we all want something normal to make us feel warm and fuzzy 
So in essence, we're training our kids that to be miserable sometimes is what a relationship is. So what I was saying back then when Josh and I were talking is that sometimes couples will split and then the children get to share, you know, homes and stuff like that. And sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. But eventually, hopefully one of their parents will start giving them an atmosphere, an environment of what happiness looks like. You know, that person finds somebody who they understand and who they mesh well with. And there's still, there's always time to show people what happiness looks like. So sometimes separating gives the child a chance to witness on one side or the other what, what happiness could be instead of, oh, this is what family is. And family means you suffer and you, you fucking keep the stay together in. and you get beat and you... You forgive and you forget. And the truth of the matter is that, man, no, it, it shouldn't have to be that way, man. Like, the children and you as a husband and, and, and your, your ex-wife as a woman, everybody has the, the right and the... Everybody's given, afforded that right to go out and try to be happy, man. And when shit's Absolutely. just not working, we're not supposed to subject the kids to that and make them endure. But... Nobody ever thinks about that shit, man, when, when pots are flying. Until it's yeah. too late. And, and the yeah. fuck yous are in the air yeah. already and the kids are just in the room, kind of like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Nobody's thinking about that. Yeah. I have a 23-year-old son and a 19-year-old daughter. They're both amazing kids. But the shit they fucking listen to and, and the incredible fucking arguments and all of the drama... Those are, it's like branding the child. With yeah, no, with, it's you know, trauma. It's, it's, trauma. it's yeah. literal trauma. And and I know the term PTSD gets thrown around a lot, but it's a real thing. We all know it. A thousand it's, percent. It's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, my kids, I'll give you several specific examples so people will know like how, how heated it got and how much we all withstood. Um, one night we were at our apartment in Mission. We had lived in this apartment for like 11 years before we moved out. So you're already talking about my two boys were there and then we had a daughter. So the family grew, the apartment stayed the same and it was an old apartment. And I mean, it was three bedroom, two bath. And, but it was just, we're stuck in this place because being, being in this relationship also kind of kept us both from progressing and doing what we needed to do because we kept falling back into those spirals of mm -hmm. of comfort drinking drugging you know comfort like not having a financial plan for the future everything was in the moment mm -hmm. and i'm like fucking stereotype hippie like oh i live in the now i live in the now but i'm not an idiot you know yeah. what i mean and, and and that almost became a scapegoat philosophy for me at the time like it's okay. This will pass. This too will pass. Like, don't worry. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And it never got better. And these cycles just kept spinning and spinning. One night, uh, the fight got so bad that, and all three of my kids were there. My daughter was maybe three or four. Uh, my sons were in their teens. And I told one of my sons, get your phone out and start recording now. And she got physical and I'm trying to restrain her. So the only time that I ever, ever got physical was in defense, right? And trying like, stop, stop, you know, please, please, like hard hugs or whatever, you know? And it got so ugly and she has also a past, you know, she had, she had gotten uh, sexually molested as a young child and it affected her, you know, traumatized her psychologically. Uh, she's had several suicide attempts and so like this is like serious shit yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like and the cops I, I ended up getting her she bit me on the hand real gotcha she bit me on the chest I ended up getting her out the door I got her out the door and I closed the door and I locked it she's out there screaming ranting raving the cops show up she tells the cops, I'm beating her up. Wow. My husband's beating me up. He's in there with my kids. Of course, whether we were drinking or not, I wasn't so fucked up that this didn't completely sober me up. You know what I'm saying? The adrenaline is rushing. Yeah. I start thinking. 
I hear a knock on the door. She says, hey, let me in. I'm sorry. Let me in. I said, I'm holding my baby in my hand, my baby daughter. And I said, no, I'm not going to let you in unless the police come because I fear for the safety of our kids right now. The cops were standing right there with her. I could see through the damn people. They were trying to act like they weren't there. They wanted to surprise me. They wanted me to open the door and they could come kick it down and you know, get me for domestic violence. She was throwing that on me. Wow. And I'm there holding my baby. I said, no, I have Sadie in my arms right now. We're scared. The kids are scared and I'm scared. You're being violent and I will not open the door unless the police are with you. And they're like, uh, sir, we're right here. So what did, the, what did the officers say? So then the officers come in, they separate everybody. They separate all my kids. Cause I said my kids were in, my son was probably 12 and the other one was probably 15. They separate everybody, they, they, they separate her, they take me downstairs, I'm holding my daughter. They try to get the story straight, you know, they wanna see if, if it's yeah, gonna they have corroborate. To collaborate. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, which makes complete sense. And here's the thing, I don't have to coach my kids because yeah. they were there, I'm not gonna tell them to lie, you know? Mm -hmm. And man, my son had video of the whole thing and thank God I told him to do it. And I was like, she bit me here, she bit me here. And this is where I fucked up. I said, do you want to press charges? I said, no. I said, just put her in the drunk tank. And that's where I fucked up. And that's what really the message that I want to tell people is that this stigma, this fear, uh, this embarrassment, this shame, you know, is what got me. That was my biggest mistake. The first time that the cops asked me when there was physical proof and the cops were there and the law was there and everything was set to protect myself and my children. And I said, no, I fucked up right there. I said, no, just put her. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Just put her in the drunk tank, right? I'll get her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be fine because I was already used to that shit. Yeah. You know? The cycle was already emblazoned yeah. in my brain. You know, I already knew that oh, this is normal. This is all freaky for the kids and for the cops, but for me, it was normal. But I wasn't thinking of the kids. Like we said, when, I mean, it's just, I have codependency issues. I have mental issues too. Obviously, if I su like submit myself to that kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the next day, when I go pick her up, she's pissed at me. And it wasn't like a, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. She was like, fucking mad like i put her in jail you know i'm like what the fuck and there was this other time we were at her parents house they live up north um and we were all drinking we were all drunk we went into the laundry room to do some laundry or something it was me and my daughter and her and she got physical she attacked me i went to get my daughter and get out of the laundry room and it Fucking locked, dude. The door locked. What brings on the attack? Yeah, what are the triggers? Because yeah, like, like, to me, I'm, I'm picturing her just like walking in. And then all of a sudden just rage. going after it you. Is, so it what, is. Where, so, is. So, the, so the diagnosis. So one of the first times that she tried to commit suicide, she took a bottle of. Like, this happened while you all were together. While we were together. This was back in like 2005, 2005-ish. She took like a bottle of Tylenol or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then she called 911. I was asleep. All of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. The, the EMS is at my door. I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, the boys are upstairs asleep. They're like, we got a call. Somebody, you know, took a bunch of pills. They took her to the hospital. You know, they give her that black charcoal shit that makes her throw all the pills up. They take her to the psych ward, right? Of course. They, and at the psych ward, they interview her, and they say, uh, do you do drugs? Yes. You have kids? Yes. Okay, are they in the house when you're doing drugs? Yes. And so then CPS, CPS comes into the picture. CPS comes into the picture. They do psycholog psychological evaluations on Home each Home assessments, yeah. everything. So yeah. they, they, we went... We did the whole test, the blocks and the questionnaires and all this shit, right? Whatever tests they do. And she got the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. 
BPD. And so with BPD, what happens is they have this fear of abandonment that, that I'm going to leave and that nobody ever stays and everybody abandons her and nobody loves her and she ain't worth shit. And, and there's these other things called splits, which is what these are, where it's just a, com it's like, so it's, it's not bipolar disorder or manic depression where you get these long bouts of sadness and then you get like three days of manic, you know, no, these are short. It's from one, one minute to the next, it's just like, a, like I could see her eyes change. Wow, man. Like it looked like a different person and I could recognize it after all the years. I already knew when it was not her. And would you say that alcohol would bring it on? Alcohol would totally bring it on. Alcohol was the catalyst. Wow. Alcohol was the catalyst and um, and fuck. I, I want to say so much, you know, I want to be really open, but I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. But this is all in the past, okay? Yeah. Well, this I tell all everybody the all the time, man, what happened in the past can only hurt you while you're visiting the past. Yeah. You know, you yeah. need to stay focused in the future. But also, yeah. Ray, I mean, I'm sure there's other people that are going through this. And, and, and you're it. very courageous for it. We were talking about this. You're, yeah. you're courageous for even coming on the podcast, I'm man. I'm scared right now, dude. I'm shaking in my fucking boots because... Like I told you at the beginning, I still love her. She's mm. the mother of my children, and I can't see her for what she is. Like, there's this veil <laughs> yeah, where I can't see the truth. But, and that's the thing about addiction. And she even said it to me. She's like, you're, you're, I'm just one of your addictions, she says to me. She, she knows me as well as I know her, which is true. Like, I refuse to see the damage that it's causing to myself and my children just for the for the that, fix for the fix man and uh so so the bpd is is the diagnosis and 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 then with the drug use and stuff that we were doing a lot of paranoia came into the picture and eventually something happened with that doctor i don't know if she made this up or she read an article that that doctor got busted for fraud or something so in her mind everything he the told diagnosis her diagnosis was, was yeah. now invalid yeah. wow so, you know, she had tried meds for a while, right? She, she was going through therapy and everything, but the meds, and that's the thing, that's the, another thing of uh, the pharmaceuticals for mental health, a lot of it are just numbing too. It's just the legal way to numb it. It doesn't yeah. fix the problem. Yeah. It's like she does, she no longer get, would get the, the highs and the lows. Yeah, but she's no longer herself. A fucking zombie. Yeah. A literal zombie. Jeez, she couldn't man. feel the sadness. But she couldn't feel happy either. Either. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so then, boom, you know, there goes, there goes the meds. Throw out the meds. You know what I'm saying? And then, <coughs> excuse me. So, flash forward to where we're in the laundry room. I'm trying to protect my daughter. And she's not attacking my daughter. She's attacking me. She's never attacked our children. Which is, that's why I'm saying it's like, there's this violence, but it was triggered by, like, the fear of abandonment. And this extreme jealousy, you know, our whole relationship was founded on we an had affair. cheated. Yeah, an affair is what got us. And then we broke up like in 2006, 2007. For a year, we were separated. And on our boyfriends and girlfriends, we went and cheated with each other. So it's, it's like that's already in her brain. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, Did you have it in you? You're capable. Yeah, you know how to get away with it. Yeah, so she calls me a, a serial cheater and she believes I'm cheating and cheating and cheating all the time. The past two years, especially with COVID and her being locked in the house for, for that long, uh, it created this whirlwind of, of jealousy that would cause insecurity. These, yeah, yeah. So, insecurity, yeah. So would you say that, that ever since, and I've noticed since COVID, that like a lot more people are starting to come out and talk about mental health. Do you think it, a lot of that is stemming from it's just getting That's worse think, compounded bro. absolutely because here's the thing about what COVID did is that uh it gave a lot of people a lot of idle time for self-examination that we, we were too busy before. or couple to, examination yeah. man you well, know when you're stuck like, together yeah. if you're quarantining together forget it yeah if yeah. you don't have that regular separation time because you i mean you guys are entrepreneurs so you might not feel it as much or maybe you feel it more because you work Mm -hmm. crazy hours i know you do but when we're doing that like the nine to five eight to five shit it's like you spend more time with those people at work 
Yeah. Then you come home for a few hours. You and eat, they're the you strangers. Watch the movies and then you go to sleep. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so yeah. So COVID definitely did impact. And so I want to say, I don't know the stats, but I want to say there was probably a high rate of like divorce and shit. Cause I knew a lot of people personally that had been together for years and were just like, they're not together. What's anymore. interesting about that too is, is I've just turned 40 and, and a lot of my life I, I've been having the ups and downs. And now that I'm 40, I want a different lifestyle. I want some better stuff. And zero to 40, I talk about this all the time, is one lifetime. Whole lifetime. 40 to 80 is a whole nother lifetime. You're going into the next, part of your life with all this knowledge and skills and insights that you get to take off why would not anybody want to be happy exactly and if and if you've lived that first life and it wasn't what you wanted exactly this is like her chance to change it so where are you guys as a couple right now i know you say you're separated but is she you know is she getting help if she she is she is so and here's the beauty of the whole story of the whole separation so the beauty is that we always, towards the end, we both recognized that we were toxic. I'm going to use that word mm-hmm. because it's, it's, that's very accurate. We were toxic for each other. And I take accountability and responsibility for it, too. I never beat her. I never hit her. You know, she'll say I did because yeah. in those defense moments, she yeah. did get some bruises. And oh, would she take advantage? Yeah, she sent pictures of her bruises to my mom a few weeks ago at three in the fucking morning. That's what brought the post on. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she was drinking where she was at and got fucked up and was like, fuck Ray. And she started emailing people, people that I don't even know that well were messaging me like, yo, dude, your ex just sent me this message at three in the morning. My mom sent me, and she had sent pictures. It was pictures of bruises she had. She had a bruise here, a bruise on her knee, a bruise here, and a bruise here. Uh, I don't know what those bruises are from. Like, they could have been from anything, you know. Uh, the, I don't know the dates of those pictures. They were old, obviously. But she didn't say Ray beat me. She sent those pictures to my mom and then put, the son that you know behind closed doors is not the same one that comes to your house. Wow. So, I mean, she's accusing me without accusing me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's leaving it up in the air for them to. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'm going to take responsibility for letting it go this long. Yeah, That's it's 20, do, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, 20 years. yeah 20, 22 years. My oldest son is 22. I, I, I never did her wrong the way she believes in her mind that I did. And this is what's fucked up. And I have to bring up this word gaslighting so it sounds like for people that believe that and i don't know i don't know if it's even a medical term but right now it's being used a lot and i hate it and let me tell you why i hate it i hate the term gaslighting because like the the statement that i just made right now is that she believes something that's not real Mm -hmm. and that's what they're they're saying like oh a manipulative narcissist me is making her think she's crazy, but it's not really her. It's just me manipulating the whole situation. Look at me now, coming on a podcast talking about it. And it makes sense, except for the people that have mental health issues. They use that term and they're relieved of any responsibility now. Because now that's going to help her deny that she needs help. Yeah, it helps them. It's going to help. Puts a bandaid on them, Like, see, I'm not. I was a victim of gaslighting the whole time. It wasn't me. He was the one that was that was making me think I was crazy. Like, it's such a complex situation. There's a lot. Subject. There's a lot in there. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it, and, it, and it goes. I'm telling you, layers and layers and 22 years of this shit. But where I was getting to was at the end, we both learned that we weren't right for each other and we weren't going to work. She's got a fucking uh, bachelor's degree in biology. She's a thesis away from her master's. She's been going to school here for 10 years. Marine biologist, you know, she's got passion. She's You, she's you want drive. her to succeed. I can I see it. You want her, her to have her own succeed, thing, to have something for herself. We can do it together. together yeah. and, and we both needed to realize that. And so with this split, the final split where I was like, you got to go. I'm done. I can't take 
these accusations anymore, the false accusations, I'm done. Like, I can't live like that. I'm done. Go to your mom's, right? So, okay, I'm going to take, take our daughter. So, okay. I'm never going to take my daughter away from her mother, mm -hmm. number one, right? So the reactive thing would be like, oh, no, I'm going to fight for custody, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though my daughter right away was like, dad, please, please, please try to get custody of me. I can't because my daughter needs her mother. Like she's 10 years old, you know what I'm saying? She needs, and what, I'm, I'm 45, my son's 19, 10 year old. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask daughter, you this. It's not a good place for her there. So I, so I let her go, she's with her mom. She's, uh, my ex is interviewing for jobs. She's got a lot of promising things. Unfortunately, there is something hanging over her head, and that is that uh, two years ago, at, the, at this house we moved to here in McAllen, uh, we had gotten into an argument, and it was so stupid, dude. She saw some picture on, she was arguing with some guy on Facebook. Like, she'd stay up all night drinking, doing stuff, and, and she'd argue with people on Facebook, and that was another thing that would just, like, uh, get her going. She wanted drama. She was addicted to drama. Addicted to chaos. Addicted to chaos. Like, when things were in order, like, something's wrong. It can't be this good, you know? And so she's arguing with some dude from Florida or something. And then she's going through all this dude's pictures, and she sees a guy that looks like a friend of ours. She says, this is, this is our friend. This is our friend. I said, what? She said, That's not our friend. That's our friend. He knows him. Something's going on. Like, you know. And I'm like, dude, stop. This is fucked up. Just stop. Just go to sleep. No. She went, bought a bottle of liquor. We had just recently moved in, so I was running some errands, cleaning up the old apartment. She was in the backyard taking shots. We have this neighbor in the back that's, that's got a leaf blower, this old lady that's like, Bleh! like, just excessive leaf blowing. Like constantly, you open the back door, just hear her back there. And yeah, it'll drive you crazy. Well, my ex is back there drinking, 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 drinking. And I get a call from my son, Dad, mom's fucked up. The cops are on their way. What? What? She said, I fucked up. I fucked up. She's crying. She went through the alley where the neighbor behind us live. She grabs the leaf blower away from the old lady and fucking smashes it down. Well, when she grabbed it from the old lady, the lady got a little scratch right here. So she's Damn. facing third degree felony assault to child, elderly, or, or disabled with intent to injure. Jeez. So she's got that hanging over her. So now it's like, you know, there's that part of me that was like, man, if she was away things would be different, but no, not for my daughter. I need her there for my daughter, you know? So it's like, if she can get past that, and I think she will, I think she's just going to get probation. She's just going to get probation, you know, and, and which is going to be great. Like, this is just a path to betterment. Right. They're going to give her probation. She'll probably have AA classes, NA, you know, drug tests, and like, you know. Yeah, keep her on the path. Keep yeah. her on the path, finish her master's, get a badass job. Start making, you know, money. Yeah, yeah, get it behind you. Dude, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. I see hope. Yeah. I let see let hope. me ask you this, Ray. Uh, from your kid's point of, of view, I, I know that you've given us your point of view. What do your sons now say or what, what does your family say about what they've witnessed, what they've gone through? What, what are those conversations like? What, what do they see now that they reflect back that was happening like? So I'll give you several examples. So one example is, um, was my son's 18th birthday. And I was hosting an open mic at uh, Europe, right? And uh, I said, hey, go with us. It was me, her, and my son. And we had got like a birthday cake for him. We had it in the trunk and we were gonna sing happy birthday. The night ended up going on, you know, it, it got late and some friends of mine went to the store and bought him a cake and he sat there and he enjoyed the night. He was just chilling. You know, he doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do anything. And by the end of the night, she got upset that I didn't make him the priority when I was on stage or whatever. I did say happy birthday and everybody knew it was his birthday, but I didn't stop the whole show, bring out the cake and have everybody sing happy birthday. And that was the trigger for her. She got upset. She 
threw a table down. We leave. We get, we're taking off. It's the end of the night. We get in the car. We're driving. And she's just angry. And she's yelling. And she's arguing. And my 18-year-old, just turned 18-year-old son, is sitting in the back seat behind her. She says, fuck this. She reaches to take her seatbelt off and jump out of the car. Jeez. And I grab the seatbelt. Like, I'm holding her. I'm like, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. She takes the wheel and freaking jerks it. With your son in the car. We run off the road. Luckily, there wasn't a telephone pole there. There was one a few feet up ahead of us, but it wasn't right there. I said, fuck this. Get out. I let go of the seatbelt. She got out. I drive my son home. He gets out of the car. He's in tears. I give him a big hug, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry. Go inside. Everything's going to be fine tomorrow. Terrible. Terrible. I go back to pick her up, and she's already in handcuffs sitting on the curb. The cops Jeez. are there. And they say, you know, what's, what's going on? I give them the story. I didn't hold anything back. I said, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. And he said, well, because you told us about what she did, we're not going to let her go back with you. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take her in. It was just another situation where they took her in. Well, shortly after that, my son joined the Navy. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's been in the Navy for like three years now. So his, his response was an escape. He ran away. Mm. He ran away, but he's taken care of. You yeah. know, he's not out in the streets. He's in a submarine in Guam. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's doing his thing. Uh, we don't talk, and I think there's a lot of resentment from his end. Or maybe he's busy. No, there's resentment. I, I can feel it. I can feel it when I send him messages and he doesn't respond. Uh, my middle son, who's 19 now, he was more vocal with me and has been for the past couple of years because he was there in the house during COVID. And, and as an 18, 17, 18, 19 year old, well, he's you know been what's telling going me on. since he was younger. Yeah, you know what's going he on, knows. isn't it? Yeah. So he was like, kick her out, dad, kick her out. I'm like, son, you don't understand. You can't, I can't just put her outside the door and lock it. Like, that's not how it works. He's like, well, then what do we have to do? Like, how do we do this? How do we do this? Like, please, begging me. Because she and him had a lot of conflict. Like, she, she's a big hoarder, and, and he would try to do something, and she would immediately say, no, don't do that. Why are you doing this? And, and she would do things that would just piss everybody off. And now that she's gone, let me tell you what. He has never been happier. Wow, yeah. He, the first day after she left, he came out and started cleaning the whole house, dude. Boom, 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 boom. Pushing all her stuff. He's like, because he knew she was going to come get some stuff. And she did. She came back like a week later to get her stuff. I made sure I wasn't there. I actually called the DA and tried to get a restraining order. Because I'm scared, dude. I'm still traumatized. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's, you know, for, and like I said at the beginning, like we have this thing where my brain is going, dude, you're such a pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking man up. Like it's still yeah, yeah. my ego or whatever. My insecurity is telling me like, dude, what the fuck, man? Just, but no, I couldn't even see her. I couldn't even look at her. I couldn't be there. So she went, she grabbed all her stuff. And then my son continued after she left. He got everything, dude, everything. Cleaned out her whole room, the whole dining room, living room, threw everything in the living room. And we got the junk mm -hmm. guy to come get it, dude. It, it was, oh, yeah. It, I can imagine. It, yeah, because yeah. at the end of the day, for face value, when I put the, the title on this podcast, people are going to automate, oh, that guy's a pussy. Yeah. That's a guy's a pussy. Like, yeah, no. It's funny because you asked me earlier. Uh, yeah, I said, asked him earlier. Hey, like, what do you think, man? Like, do you think it makes him a pussy? And I said, dude, you know what? Honestly, no. I said, because of this, and I, and, and I followed with, we're brought up as men not to raise a hand to a yeah. woman yeah no you know? absolutely not and, and and we're raised with uh, sayings like la ropa sucia se lava en casa you know you don't go and talk about exactly. bullshit that goes on at exactly. home you know exactly. so so and um fuck i have family and, and and i have been around some of my family members, you know, I won't mention names and shit, but they'll yeah. slap the fuck out of their husbands and shit. And the husbands I know could 
take out you know guys with one fucking punch you know and then i've seen them do it and shit and yeah. and and yet their wives hit them and and they take it and they say fuck it okay calm them down and kind of go through the motions go it's through very the motions. similar with yeah. a lot less uh dramatic uh undertone but I, there are women out there who do it and i don't think that the men who who bite their tongue and don't hit back are pussies i think that they're uh you know they're 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 the men that we expect them to be you know yeah, yeah and and i completely agree because you're in a house yeah. and you're being terrorized yeah every yeah. single day yeah what does that do to the mind like you're stuck in your own little self you and don't that, talk to anybody oh and that's supposed to be your safe place exactly your home is supposed to be where the love and the and the safety and the tenderness and the care is that's what it's supposed to be yeah. it's also it's also a place where the discipline and the examples are set and the stuff yes. so so as a man and plain devil's advocate i would say that early on if i saw that um my wife was like a dr jekyll and mr hyde kind of thing during or under the influence i i would do my best to try to limit that and control that and so but alcohol and drugs has a, a tight hold on a lot of people especially after after covid man it's their consumption of alcohol was through oh, the yeah, roof yeah yeah no, definitely. And that's where that's where i'll take the responsibility because i was an enabler yeah yeah because that's I, was where I was partaking with that. it myself yeah. So, to I, escape. so I had my escape there and I just let it happen because oh, I'm over here getting high. Yeah, yeah. doing my the, thing, you know. Yeah, so so I think that um that you uh, are most definitely not a pussy. I think that we all have flaws and stuff, but you keeping quiet about something that uh that you felt brought shame to your family is something that we're trained to do. Yeah. It's part of our culture, it's part of our heritage, it's part of who we are kind of shit. Um so coming out and talking about it openly as you're doing right now on this type of platform is uh, is admirable and 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 you know it's uh it's welcomed because there are men out there who are in toxic relationships or who are being beaten or who are being and uh, vice versa and too vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know yeah, especially absolutely. vice versa no this that, goes both ways yeah. and i think the one of the most important things that that i want people to take from this is that damage is being done irreparable damage and the longer that you believe that oh we're gonna change or it's gonna work the more damage you're doing the more irreparable damage these kids are being traumatized by witnessing this and it's gonna affect like we said earlier the way they see what a relationship is That's supposed to be absolutely right and what is tolerable and what is uh do what is uh you know common and normal yeah. and, and becomes normal yeah becomes uh they become numb to it yeah and it's uh as parents that's not something we want to show i think as parents it's best that we show our children that if you're not happy in a situation for any fucking reason bounce yeah be selfish yeah. get out of the relationship you have to and, have and, to. and look for happiness because at the end of the day family is incredibly important but so is the energy that the family brings to you, you absolutely know, like if, if your family's toxic then get the fuck away you yeah know, exactly and, and make and a I, new I, family a lot of people are talking about image. that now yeah. like you, you, i mean it, you gotta cut people off yeah. no matter uh, blood or not you know yeah. what i mean cancer's cancer and sometimes exactly. cancer comes on two legs exactly that breathes eats and shits and walks just like i do man yep. and, and yeah. sometimes you have to cut the cancer out and and like all cancer patients will tell you yeah and cancer survivors yeah the chemo sucks the surgery sucks the healing sucks. the road to recovery the road to recovery sucks and that's why it's so difficult to detach ourselves from people who have become a part of us yeah and all of a sudden it becomes toxic yeah so yeah no having somebody in your life that is bringing you more harm than good needs to be removed i mean Absolutely. it's just that simple and, and and the removal process and the healing thereafter that's the motherfucker man that's what we yeah. so from these past 22 years man uh, give some words of advice to to people who probably are going through this uh like we said like before we all say that we love our kids right we all say that we would do anything to prevent 
our kids from being harmed. Mm -hmm. Any any man, any woman that that has a paternal or a maternal instinct, be like, I would die for my kid. I would kill for my kid. You know, I, I want to provide the best. Staying in a toxic relationship is child abuse. I like that. You are putting your kids yeah. through suffering. Unnecessary mental suffering, mental anguish, confusion, mental anguish, trauma. Yeah. I mean, and and I used the word irreparable before, but I'll take it back because yeah, therapy works, treatment works. You know, we're not gonna shit on on mm -hmm. mental health. Health. People with mental health issues can get help. Like for for VPD, there's a treatment program. There's medication, and there's uh, group therapy sessions. There's you know, there's proven treatment. Like, there are people living with BPD right now that know, and they manage it. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they'll, they'll, they'll know the clues and the hints of... of symptoms of, it, of symptoms an oncoming... Of when they're going to... An oncoming split, so they know, okay, okay, this is not really the end of the world. He's mm -hmm. not really going to leave me. This is just me. So let me breathe. Let me listen to some music. You know, there's, uh, there's books out there... Uh, Think one's called stop walking on eggshells that's for people that live with people with bpd wow, so i had no idea that this was even a thing man. yeah and like i i could not i didn't watch not one single minute of the the johnny depp amber heard thing uh -huh. i couldn't yeah. i couldn't watch not one bit of it because somewhere i heard somebody mentioned she has bpd that, hmm. that girl and i was like fuck yeah, I know what that is, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, it's real, and it's treatable, but like I said, I'm not, I'm not without blame, and, and the blame that I'll take, and I'll keep saying it, is I was too comfortable in the chaos myself, mm -hmm. not willing to accept, or I was just willing to ignore or maybe I didn't know or didn't want to face that my kids were being hurt this whole time. Uh, my son, and everybody tells me, hey, bro, hey, bro, it's my mom, dude. It's his mom. Tell him no matter what, no matter what, that it's still his mom. And I was like, no. It goes back to what we were talking about. Your mom fucking beats you or your dad beats you. You used to, oh, or rapes you, you're going to be like, oh, it's still my dad, it's still my mom. Yeah. No, fuck that shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Get the fuck out. And I, I, I give so much thanks and praise to my, my middle son because he's the one that gave me the courage to finally, like, jump out. My 19-year-old son has been on me. Like, he, he doesn't bullshit, and he sees right through bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And from, from the day he was able to articulate it, he's been telling me, like, something's wrong like this shouldn't be happening like we shouldn't have to put up with this shit why are we going through this again why is this happening again dad and and it's me making excuses making excuses i'm sorry i'm sorry son i'm sorry uh, uh, it'll get fixed soon i'll take care of it i'll do something i have a plan and this and that and the longer i prolonged it look you know the more damage that was done but it's never too late and that's the thing, like, yeah, 22 years, you would think, oh, shit, 22 years, you couldn't fucking figure it out? Mm -hmm. Nah, man, I did figure it out. And that's that we can't work together. We can't, it's not going to work. I'm a better person and she's a better person when we're not separate. together. Separate. Yeah, mm -hmm. separate. And, and whatever was written in the cosmos, whatever, I don't regret because our kids are amazing. Mm -hmm. Our kids are fucking amazing. And then even my son, sometimes he'll be like, well, I, I wouldn't even be who I am if I didn't go through this shit, yeah. too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we have struggles. Well, you like, build a resilience. Everything yeah. is as it should be. Everything it is, is as it should be. Yeah, it always is. is. Yeah. And I'll go back to my hippiness. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is the way is it is. But if you can get a grip, if like it, it took me this long to finally get a grasp and get the courage to say, I'm going to draw the line. Like, make boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, both sides, whether you're... Yeah. You're male, female, transgender, whatever. Nobody should be subjected to violence in their own home. Mm -hmm. That's the home is where the happiness should develops. be. Sanctuary, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's where it's where it's conceived. 
It's where it incubates, it's where it's birthed, and that's where it spreads from. And when I first got with her, she would, and I had this idea in my head, and, and I don't know why I never put it into practice myself. I guess I was trying for 22 years, I was trying. She would say, no, we need, we need, a, we need another car, or we need a house, or we need a, a yard. Or something more. You know, it's some, something's not right, and I need more. And I told her, yeah, 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 that all will come. But first, first, we have to be happy here where we are with what we have. When we achieve that, then everything else will come. Everything else will come. And so, like, uh, it took me a while to get, like, financially stable enough to, to, and I have a really, really good job right now. So we were able to rent this house. We were in the apartment, I told you, for 11 years, mm -hmm. trap. And so then we got this house. And then I was like, okay, this is it. This is where the happiness happens now. Like, now yeah. she's going to be happy. Like, you know, we got the yard. We got the garden. We got... No, and it just, it was the same cycle. And like I said, I'm guilty of perpetuating that cycle until I got the courage, the fucking just common sense even, you know, or, or you know, just the clarity to see like, okay, this is never going to fucking change unless I do something, which is put my foot down. I had the opportunity during a fight to say, this is it. This is it. Like, you go figure it out over there. We'll go through the whole divorce, child support shit, whatever the fuck. Like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And from that day, um, it was Father's Day. It was June 19th when they left. So it's been a little over a month. <clears throat> it's been nothing but a weight lifted off my shoulders, a weight lifted off my son's shoulders. Even my daughter is doing great at my in-laws. Like, they're taking care of her. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. she's... She doesn't need for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I know she's safe. I know she's okay. Uh, my ex seems to be doing fine. You know, I don't really want to talk to her right now because, like I said, I really do have that codependency issue where you I go, can you suck. can go right back in. I'm madly in love with this person for 22 years. Let them beat the shit out of me, you know, and mm -hmm. fuck up our, my kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah. their minds. Like, everybody's fucked up. Because of this stupid, and it's, I, I call it love. I don't even know if it is love. Maybe it is just my codependency, my own obsession. Yeah. yeah, my own, like she said, I'm addicted to her. Yeah. My own addiction. So I've got I've to learn to face all this shit and grow. And this past month has been nothing but growth. Good. Uh, I've always wanted to, or I've always like tried to study different religions and philosophies and stuff. And, and, and one of the principles that like Alan Watts would say about Buddhism or, or Taoism is that, you know, when a man wants to sit, he sits. And when he wants to stand up, he stands up. Mm -hmm. That's the man who sits and stands up. That's the man who's free. That's the man who's happy. And I put this, this barrier on myself by being in this toxic relationship. Yeah. I put that barrier on myself where I couldn't have a beer with a friend. I couldn't be at a, at a podcast uh, I had to bring my daughter with me or, or the dog or something. You know what I'm saying? Like there was all these limitations, but I was doing it to myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important advice that, that I want to give to people is that it's easy for me to call myself a victim. But the whole time I had the keys to the cell, yeah. the whole time I created this prison you know, and I let myself be locked in there and everybody was telling me, like, look, 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 just get out, do something. And no, 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 that's, that's not right. I, I don't want to upset the way things are. Like, I, I, get, I get this uh, complacency with comfort. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate discomfort. I hate pain. I hate, you know, and... And yeah, if, if, I always say that if you're not anything. doing the training, you're being trained. Mm -hmm. There's it's always one way or the other. So you're learning to walk on eggshells yeah. sometimes, and it's yeah. like shit. You don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen. Like it's crazy. Yeah. But Ray, I mean, geez, man, I, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I I, I really admire your courageous uh, testimony, dude, because you you don't get to hear these things, and I think it's important for people to know what's out there, what's going on, and and uh, mental health is is a huge and thing. I think that they're not alone. Yeah, that they're not alone. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you're not alone. And you hold the key, 
and you're you're you are a victim of circumstances but those circumstances can be changed you can right. change them you can get yourself out of it it's scary it's like taking a leap you know but you can do it man you can do it whatever whatever's happening in your house you know if it's not right you can put a stop to it you can make a change you can progress you can be better we can all do it man with all that right. being said guys we'll see you on the next session